that y'all don't do it. Um, remember your note pages, okay? I don't know how most of you felt with the first exam, but if you read your note pages, you have everything you need along with the PowerPoint slide, okay? Um, so starting on page 255, and you're going to see in your note pages, um, I do put on there, you're going to see your supplies will help go through this, okay? Because that way it'll give you some better pictures, pictures that they don't have in the textbook, um, and better maybe little explanations of what it's used for and stuff. Um, so the first thing on page 255 is introduced to you an endoscope. You also may hear it called a laparoscope. So this is what's going to get used to do a laparoscopic procedure. Okay, so that way we don't have to open the belly wide open. We can just do some little trocar punches and put an endoscope in, and then we can see what we can see through a camera and a, um, a scope, okay? So looking at the picture on the next slide, I kind of shows you everything that is attached to it, okay? Can y'all see my cursor? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, I can okay. see I don't, it. You can see it moving, okay. So when you're looking at this picture, they show you the camera head, okay? That's just the camera. Then it attaches itself to the eyepiece of the scope and then in order to have better visualization, you need a light cord right here, okay? And then this is the big shaft that's going to go through the trocar. So looking at it all together, now some doctors, depending on what procedure it is, not a belly, but through the nose, they can use little small endoscopes and not use the camera piece. They're just going to look straight through the eyepiece, okay? The camera piece actually gives us better visualization because it projects it to a TV screen. So we can actually see what's going on on the TV screen and we have a, you know, an idea of how to, it's like helps us anticipate what we need, okay? So looking at your note pages, okay? It says surgeries that are done using the endoscope, they have shorter hospital stays, quicker recovery times, because you just have small little punch holes for your trochars and your instrument. Um, you can do endoscopes inside your body cavities. You can put them into joint spaces. If anybody's had like a knee scope, shoulder scope, you use different size endoscopes depending on where you are, okay? Um, the purpose of them is to, you know, help repair, just for viewing. Um, you can go in there and take a biopsy. Um, so different reasons that I have listed there, okay? Then when you look on page 256, um, they're going to show you a picture of a flexible endoscope, okay? Um, they have a difference between rigid and flexible. Rigid is what we use mainly just for um, like abdominal cases, nasal cases, things like that. The flexible ones, we're going to need to go inside with your digestive tract, basically. So EGPs, colonoscopies, um, Sometimes, like ureters and stuff, you're going to need a flexible scope, okay? Because things like that aren't really just open or straight. You know, they kind of curves here and there, so you're going to need a flexible one. So make sure you know the difference between a flexible and a rigid. And the endoscope that we commonly most use are going to be rigid, okay, in surgery. Um, it says you can use them with or without the cameras being attached. Okay, like I told you earlier, all they're going to do is hold that little eyepiece and they're going to look through it, which means we can't see anything that they're doing, only the doctor can. So it makes it a little bit harder for us. Um, let's see. I told you about the light cord. They always have to have a light cord or you won't be able to see inside the cabin. Okay. On 256, you need to know the list of the specialty endoscopes. Okay. So there, it's all med terms. So make sure you highlight those red dots and you know what scope is used for what viewing purpose okay, and what structure that they're going to go ahead and view. So coloscopes, that has to do with your gallbladder and your biliary system. Um, your ureteroscopes, of course, it's for your ureters. Um, Thetoscope, you're looking into the thetus, okay, while it's in utero. 
So make sure you put your med terms together, look at those scopes, and kind of be able to pinpoint which one's going with which, okay? Um, another thing i put on there for key terms, make sure you're looking at your key terms in the textbook, but also make sure you're matching them with the key terms that are going to be in your workbook as well. And I also had listed a few more that I want you to go ahead and look at. They may have come from like earlier in the chapter, um, but go ahead and make sure that that's all going to be matching on your exam. Okay. Where are the key terms at? Like um, the page. They're always the key terms that you got in your workbook, but then they're always the first page in your textbook of the chapter. Oh, okay, okay. So the difference that we find that we came across is um, for some reason, like they have a couple of extra terms that don't line up with the book and the workbook. So sometimes you might have an extra one in the book or an extra one in the workbook. So I tell everybody for every chapter, make sure that you compare the list and make sure that you're getting all of them together. Okay. And then, of course, anytime you see a red word in your chapter, define it, look it up, make sure you understand what it is, okay? Um, so the difference between monopolar and monopolar cautery, your monopolar cautery is just going to be your handheld bogey that we showed you, okay? Your bipolar cautery is going to be what looks like um, bayonet pickup. Stop it. You're looking at me like I'm stupid. Um, the bipolar looks like the bayonet pickups, and it's bipolar, so you have two prongs that have to be activated in order for it to work. So just make sure and you, your monopolar, oh, there's me. Your monopolar um, is only that one single ESU. Okay, let me go get Brianne real quick. Hold on. Okay, Bree, we just, um, I just saw, we Did I miss much or? Okay. Hey, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my computer all of a sudden said your battery is low and it shut off. You said the monopolar cautery. That's the um. The bovie. The bovie. Okay, hold on. Yes. Oh, I'm glad I didn't have to like go back and find them. And then the bipolar electrosurgery. Which one? Is that That's the one? the one that looks like a pickup. The bayonet. Okay. Okay. 
So now that I know I didn't lose anybody. That's cool. Um, all right, let's see. So scopes, make sure you know what scopes go with what um, physiology, your monopolar, your bipolar. All right, looking at powered instruments. If you're familiar with just using a regular drill at home, you can work a drill in surgery. Okay. The only difference is I, I maybe doubt that everybody uses a nitrogen powered drill at their house. Um, we probably just you have a regular battery operated drill. So when you're looking at page 256, this shows you an oscillating power saw. You have to know what direction the blades are going. Okay. Um, let's see. Can y'all see my PowerPoint again? No, no. Oh, let me go back and share my screen. Okay. Okay, now? Yeah. Okay, so the reciprocating blade will go back and forth. So remember, I thought I'd make it turn like you reciprocate feelings or something to somebody. It's back and forth, okay? So that's how it cuts. So, you know, to and from you uh, you know we're going back and forth oscillating is going to go side to side and that's what you see on 256. they also have one that goes in a rotary motion which is like a regular drill or a reamer so it goes in a circular motion okay the different options that they're powered by you can have compressed air nitrogen electricity or battery so 10 to 1 we're probably going to have the bigger drills are going to be just with battery powered um for smaller more delicate structures they actually do use the compressed air or the nitrogen which is going to have a black cord attached to the handpiece and then thrown off to the nerves she's going to attach it to maybe a tank or something that's in the wall okay they have canisters inside the surgery wall um we have a valve on it so she would hook it up and then it's compressed like from the outside of the hospital. There's, it's piped all in the walls, okay? So smaller structures, you probably will have a cord to hook up. Bigger drills and reamers, it's just battery powered, okay? So make sure you know the directions of the bleeding. Um, the cranial perforator, which is on the next page, that goes in a rotary motion, okay? It goes in a circle, as you can see here. It's like a big drill bit. Now, sometimes they do have smaller sizes. Um, that is, and people freak out when they see this, but you're drilling through the skull with this big blade to get uh, maybe like a hematoma evacuated. The trick is that these dural drill bits actually have a stopping point that they know once it breaks the bone, it actually stops. So that way it doesn't go and actually drill your brain tissue. So as soon as it releases the pressure from the bone, the drill cuts off. So it's like a safety feature, okay, that they have. Um, let's see. All right, so drills and drivers have a rapid rotary motion and then reamers have a slower rotary motion. So basically, it's all together, they all have rotary. They're all going in a circle, just like you're going to do a drill bit to put a screw in the wall. They all go in a circle. They're just telling you the difference between like a drill is going to go really, really fast, okay, to like do, put your hole in it so you could put a screw. The reamers, what they do with reamers, um, you can see on this photo, is they actually do drilling out the center of your bone with the reamer, all right, right where that bone marrow passes because let's say you have a broken leg and we have to put a rod in your leg. So we have to drill out the center of that bone in order to get a rod put in. So the reamers won't go that, that fast due to the, you know, the delicate nature of being inside the bone. Um, but all the drills and reamers still have a uh, rotary. It's just one's gonna be slower and one's gonna be a little faster. So the reamer actually like takes what's inside of the bone and takes it out yeah it just kind of like eats it up and it'll come out all attached to the reamer and then we irrigate it out real good suction it oh, okay and then we put the rod in all right. all right 
So they tell you on 256, you have those red dots about different reasons that you're actually going to go ahead and use um, your powered instruments. Uh, let's see. Always pass your powered instruments in the off position. Okay, always want to have that safety on. You never want to pass something to where they hit a button right away, it's going to, you know, turn on. Um, Later in that paragraph, it's talking to you, like I told you where the nitrogen is going to be supplied from, about like in the walls of the hospital and stuff. Um, I think we covered everything for powered instruments. I think so. Okay. Um, do y'all have any questions with the pictures you see here with the endoscope, the reamer, and the cranial perforator? And you guys are going to learn more about this stuff in like chapters like 13, 18, 24 when we do these specific specialties. All right, on to microscopes. Um, you're going to look at the picture on 257. They show you a microscope. This is the kind that actually has the base that's going to be on a rolling, you know, base on the floor. They actually do have some microscopes that are set up on a boom system, like a track system on the ceiling. So you don't have it coming, you know, on the floor in your feet and in your way. Um, a lot of the bigger hospitals, I think even Chabert has one too now, that the track is just like track lighting, okay? And the microscope's up there, they pull it down, they can put it in front of the doctor and they can use it um, as is. So that way it's kind of a lot less equipment in your face. I mean, in your feet, 